So, last class I was discussing about the um, cantilever sheet pile in granular soil and as uh, you have noticed that there are four regions of that uh, cantilever sheet pile region 1, region 2, region 3 and region 4 and region 1 is in active state, region 2 is in passive state, 3 is in again active state and 4 is in passive state. Okay? So, I uh, have drawn this active pressure diagram. So, you can see that <coughs> this diagram will be this portion only. Okay? because the region 1 is only active and region 3 is active. So, and uh, as uh, you have noticed that here this value is k into gamma into h plus a, here it is k into gamma into a, because it, here it will start from uh, this point dredge level and this is the a. A value is the distance of O from the dredge level. So, this is a depth of the sheet pile is d and height of the sheet pile above dredge level is h. So, this will be uh, gamma k a into gamma into a and similarly this value will be k into gamma into d because at the depth of the sheet pile is d and this value is k into gamma into h plus d. Similarly, I can draw the passive pressure So, the, so, my this passive pressure diagram as the k p is greater than k a. So, this pressure diagram this pressure value will be higher. So, and I am drawing this diagram. So, it will start from here. Okay? It will start from here because this is the your region 4, region 4 is in passive. So, it will give the passive resistance in the region 4. Okay? And then region 2 is also passive. So, the region 2 it will start here to here. So, this is region 2 it is also passive then it will go up to here. Okay? So, this is the passive pressure diagram. Okay? So, if I write down the values, so again from here to here it is A. So, I can write these values K P gamma into a. Okay? Initially, it was k gamma into a, now it is passive k p gamma into a and definitely this value will be k p gamma into d and this value will be definitely k p gamma into h plus d this one will be k p gamma into h plus a. Okay? So, this is the active pressure diagram and this is the passive pressure diagram. So, I have this is my region 1, this is region 1, this is region 2, this is region 3 and this is region 4. Okay? This region 1 is active, so this is only active, region 2 is passive, so this is passive, region 3 again active and this is region 4 again passive. So, here also this is region 1, this is region 2, this is region 3, this is region 4. Okay. So, now if you look at these two diagram that up to dredge level there is no issue. Okay the up to dredge level, if I now draw the net pressure diagram. 
So, now I am drawing the net pressure diagram. So, now I am drawing the net pressure diagram. Okay. So, this is a dredge level, this is the point O. So, this is point O, this is the dredge level. Okay. And this one is the net pressure. diagram. So, now, if I uh, look at these uh, two uh, diagrams, this is active pressure diagram, passive pressure diagram. So, up to this point that dredge level, there is only one pressure that is active, because in this side no pressure is there, either active or passive. So, net pressure diagram up to the dredge level, this is the active pressure diagram. So, that value I can write. So, this value is k a into gamma into h. Okay? This is the active pressure diagram. Now, below the dredge level, so this portion it is active, but the because right hand side of this wall is active, but the left hand side of this wall is passive. And as I mentioned that your passive coefficient is very, very high compared to the active coefficient. So, you can see this distance is very small, the A value from the dredge level is very uh, small compared to the H value, but the K p value is very high. So, ultimately what will happen that your passive resistance or passive uh, pressure will be greater compared to the active pressure. So, a, a point will come. So, because this is the passive resistance, this side is the active resistance. And as I mentioned, the as we go towards the downward direction from the dredge level, so my passive force or passive pressure will increase as the Kp value is very, very high compared to the active value. Though the A value is small, uh, smaller than the H value, but still as the Kp value is very very high as compared to the active value. So, my passive resistance will increase. So, what will happen that the, there will be some point the net pressure diagram in there will be 0, where your active pressure and the passive pressure will be same. And after that your pressure distribution diagram will shift from the right side to the left side. Okay? And then, so that means here it is passive. So, this passive at this point will be definitely greater than the active force at this level, okay, as the K p is very high. So, what I am trying to say that these things will continue up to here, then it, it the net pressure diagram will shift towards the other side of the sheet pipe. And there will be a point where the net pressure diagram will be exactly 0. Okay? So, I can draw that this is the O point. So, up to this there is a uh, your K, um, there is no passive resistance, though this is only active resistance. After that, that your passive resistance will increase as we go towards the downward direction from the dredge level. So, your pressure will start shifting from right side to the left side. Okay? So, this is the pressure distribution diagram. Now, here it will be in this direction, okay? because this point, this portion, because here your definitely your K p gamma a is greater than K a gamma h plus a, okay? because the k p value is very, very high as compared to the k a value. Clear? So, now as it is greater than this one, so your diagram will shift. So, diagram will shift from this side to this side. This is the net pressure diagram. Okay? 
because as this portion k p gamma a is greater than the k gamma h plus a. After that, so when it will shift here, after that this is the active and this one is the passive. So, again I can say that k p gamma h plus d is greater than k a gamma into d. So, this value, this value is higher than compared to this one. So, again from here the diagram net pressure diagram will again shift to the other side. Okay? So, there will be two points where your net pressure diagram will be exactly 0. So, again from here to here it will shift to the other side. Okay? So, this is the complete pressure distribution diagram of this cantilever sheet pile well in phi soil. Okay? So, this is the total so distribution diagram, net pressure distribution diagram. So, these are two points, one is this one, one is this one, where the net pressure is exactly 0. Okay? So, now I have to derive the mathematical expression for this net pressure diagram. Okay? So, what I am doing that I am writing that only for this triangular portion above the dredge level, the force which is acting is P A, okay? which is acting is P A and that value is, suppose this portion is this value is a dash, where the stress is exactly 0. So, at this portion the a dash at a distance of a dash from the base of the uh, from the dredge level your net pressure distribution diagram your net pressure is 0. So, a dash where the net pressure is 0. So, I can write that this P A is at a height of y bar from this point, which is you can say this is a dash point okay? or, or you can say this is a point. And then what I am doing, so I am drawing some additional lines. So, this straight line I am just extending and then joining with this line. Okay? This is a straight line I am extending. So, you say that this is a dash and from the base of the retaining wall, these are base of the sheet pile, this is capital Y. Okay? And from here where this is maximum, I am writing this is Z. Okay? So, where this value is maximum, I am writing this is z or, or this distance is z from the base. So, I can write that P A is equal to or small p A is equal to K A gamma into H, small p A is this one, small p A is K A gamma into H. Okay. So, where k gamma is the unit weight of the soil, where gamma is the unit weight of the soil. Now, at a point, at a point your net stress is 0. Okay? So, net stress is 0 means at this point if I look at this value at these two diagrams. So, here this a point is somehow here. So, where the active pressure is will be k a gamma h plus a dash and passive will be k p gamma a dash. Okay? So, I can write that a point 
that at the stress net stress is 0 that means the active pressure is equal to passive pressure your net stress is equal to 0 that is at point A active pressure is equal to passive pressure. So, at point A my active pressure is K A gamma H plus A dash and that will be equal to the passive pressure at that point K A gamma sorry K P gamma A dash. Okay. So, I can write that or A dash from here I can write that this is K A gamma H divided by K P minus K A into gamma. So, this so if I simplify this equation above equation we will get the A dash value and K A gamma H is nothing but a P A. Okay. So, this will be K P minus K A into gamma. So, this way I will get the expression of A dash. So, I will get that how I will cal calculate the A dash value. Now, I can write that here I am writing this is P P 1 this is I am writing P P 2. Okay. So, the P P 1 P P 1 is equal to. So, P P 1 will be the net passive minus the net pressure that means the passive minus active at this point. So, at this point the passive is at this point the passive is this one k p gamma h plus d and the active is k a gamma d. So, the net pressure at this point is k p gamma h plus d minus k a gamma into d and what will be the. So, this is the p p 1 and p p 2 p p 2 it is originally is not existing because this is the net pressure diagram p p 2 I have drawn and I have extended the straight line. So, how I can calculate the p p 2 p p 2 is basically the net pressure if I extend this line up to the o, o z uh, up to the y capital Y. So, I can write this p p 2 is k p minus k a into gamma into capital Y because if I extend this line. So, here it is 0 and this diagram is your earth pressure is K p minus K, K a. So, the earth pressure coefficient will be K p minus K a into gamma into Y because this is the Y because this is a triangular form. So, now if I draw a diagram suppose like this where my earth pressure coefficient is K p minus K a this is 0 okay. in a sandy soil earth pressure coefficient this this one this value is capital Y. So, this value will be P P 2 will be K P minus K into gamma into capital Y. Okay. So, that is the value of K P 2. So, now summation of all horizontal force is 0 if I take summation of all horizontal force. So, 0. So, what are the forces that I am considering? So, this is the force P capital A is the force for the active pressure diagram above the dredge level. Then I am considering this uh, this is up, uh, uh, including this portion also this P P is if I draw this uh, part. So, this is part 1 this is part 2. So, my P P or P A is the total active force due to 
part 1 and 2. Okay? So, this P p is total active force due to part 1 and part 2. So, this above the dredge level and some portion below the dredge level up to A point. So, that is, is P p. Now, what I am doing that I am taking this triangle. Okay? So, I am taking the triangle. So, if I give the name, this is the A point, this is the B point, this is the C point and this is the C dash and this is C okay? and this point is say Z. So, I can write that the total horizontal force P p is acting here, this is the force and there is another force. Okay? What are these forces? So, this is the P p or P a then plus the force due to triangle due to the triangle Z C C dash due to this triangle. Okay? So, if I consider this triangle Z C C dash, then I am considering this portion. Okay? But this is the additional portion I am also considering. Now, I have to subtract this portion. So, now if I subtract this, the force due to triangle A B C dash then I am considering this portion twice, one is plus, one is minus. So, this portion is subtracted okay? and this portion is considered in this force and this portion is considered in this force. This portion is considered in this force as well as in this force. So, it is been subtracted. Okay? So, that will be equal to 0. So, I can write this is force due to triangle Z C C dash, this is force due to triangle Z uh, sorry A A B C dash, A is this one. Clear? So, now I will calculate the forces. Okay? So, I can write P A plus the force due to the triangle Z C C 1. So, Z C C 1. So, this triangle height is Z and base is P P 2 plus P P 1. So, I can write this is half P P 1 plus P P 2 into capital Z because this is the height of this triangle and base is P P 1 plus P P 2. Then minus force due to the triangle A B C dash. Okay? So, height of this triangle is capital Y and base is P P 2. So, this will be half P P 2 into capital Y is equal to 0. Okay? So, this is the all the uh, forces that I have taken. Now, again I will write that from this expression that capital Z value is P P 2 into Y minus 2 P A divided by P P 1 plus P P 2. So, this is equation number 2. So, what are the unknowns I have? Because A dash is known, I will get from here. So, unknown one unknown is Z, another unknown is capital Y. Ultimately, we have to determine the value D. Okay? So, in the sheet pile, we have to determine the value D. What would be the depth? We will provide and D value is equal to capital Y plus A dash. Okay? D value is capital Y plus A dash. So, Z I will get from here. 
Now, I will take the moment at point B, summation of all moment I am taking at point B and that is equal to 0. So, moment what are the moments? So, there are three parts one is the P A part, another is the force due to the triangle Z C C 1 C dash and that is the force due to the triangle A B C dash. So, three parts. So, I am taking the first part, first part is the P A and the lever M is. So, y bar is from A point. So, capital Y plus y bar. So, this will be the lever M. So, this is capital Y plus y bar plus. So, this again the force due to this triangle Z C, C dash and the lever arm will be Z by 3. Okay? So, this will be half P P 1 plus P P 2 into Z into Z by 3. Okay? This will be Z by 3 because Z is the height of this triangle then minus half P P 2 into capital Y into this is Y is the height of this triangle. So, this base this height into Y by 3. So, this one will act at a height of capital Y by 3 and this will act at a height of capital Z by 3. Okay? So, this will these two forces that I have drawn. So, this is the two forces. Okay, one is capital Z by 3, another Y capital Y by 3. So, finally, this will be capital Y divided by 3 that is equal to 0. So, after simplifying the equation number 3, after simplifying Fication of equation 3 will get 6 P A capital Y plus Y bar plus Z square P P 2 plus P P 1 minus P P 2 into capital Y square is equal to 0. Okay. So, here only unknown is capital Y. So, only unknown in equation 4 is capital Y. Okay. So, you determine capital Y and your D will be capital Y plus A dash. Now, this analysis I have done without applying any factor of safety, because here just the equilibrium condition I have considered. So, factor of safety is 1. So, thus you increase increase D by 20 percent to 30 percent to give the factor of safety. So, how where you will get the P P 2 and P P 1? So, P P 2 and P P 1 you will get from these two expression. This is the P P 2 and P P 1. Okay? And when you are putting P P 1 you replace D by capital Y plus A dash. A dash you will get from equation number 1 capital Y is the unknown. So, you replace D by capital Y plus A dash. So, you put this value here all the D you replace and this is capital Y. Now, put this P P 1 P P 2 in this equation and then in this equation and then you simplify that solve it you will get the capital Y and then D will get from Y plus A dash and increase this D by 20 to 30 percent, then you will get the 
total depth required for the sheet pile cantilever sheet pile in granular soil. Okay. So, next class I will solve one numerical problem, an example problem on cantilever sheet pile in, in uh, granular soil and then you will see how we can use these equations or theory to determine that depth of the sheet pile. Thank you.